So I've marked <coughs> the perimeter of the tambour door. It's 15 mil narrower than the door on each side, so 30 mil total. And I've allowed 20 mil top and bottom um, overlap, if you like. Just marked out a radius by drawing around something that I like the look of. I'm going to cut it with my jigsaw. But to make the straightest possible edge, I've got myself a nice, heavy, smooth bit of wood. What I'm going to do is manoeuvre the jigsaw until I get to the right edge, then butt this against the shoe and clamp it into position. Done a couple of centimetres of the cut just to make sure it's straight. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, so we've cut the hole out for the tambour door and laid it face down in the van. There's the door with its side rails on and I put some blocks here representing the piece it's going to sit on when it's fully closed. So just need to establish where middle is and then I can put some side pieces on to allow me to mount it. Okay finally found a tape measure. So what I can do is hook this into the aperture and measure to the edge of the frame and I've got uh, 25, 26 there So I'll put that on twenty. Right. So on twenty from the edge. That's only fifteen from the edge. That shouldn't have happened. I obviously snagged it. So make that one read fifteen. And that one's fifteen. Cool. So we're in the middle. Take the measure out. Make sure these side rails are on and I'm going to 
marker line onto the back of the cupboard front. And because I've got several lines on here, just make it very clear. Brilliant. Mark on the top, just for interest. There we go. And there is essentially our frame. What we're going to do now is put something here to butt those uh, channels up to. I should just say that the manufacturers recommend double-sided tape for putting these tracks onto your cupboard or your frame. Um, I've never had much luck with that, so I'm using tacks. Panel pins, basically. If you're gonna do the same as me, which I'm not recommending, just telling you what I'm doing, use a panel pin and a punch to make sure the head is flush with the surface in there. There are two tiny little um, blades of plastic that the door touches and I'm going between them so it should be well out of the way but yeah use a punch to make sure it's well and truly under flush. At this stage, I'd say don't be trusting your measurements for the width because A, you don't need to, and B, nothing actually matters except this running nicely. So put your door into the one groove you've attached to the front of your cupboard. There we go. Then put your other channel on. nice and snug and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one screw in the middle of this rail and turn it over and just make sure that everything looks and feels right. Now I should have pretty much a functioning door to have a play with.
and that's stopped because the top has folded over rather than using a spiral because we haven't fitted one. So the next item to work out will be just mounting these spirals so that the door can fold over like that. If like me you've not got sides to trap these between they can be quite flexy and no matter what you do it's it, you know it's plastic basically if it's not fully supported so one option is knowing that the uh, door doesn't actually make it into the center here you can pop a hole in there and put a spindle in the middle to tie it all together that's what i'm going to do There we are. Now, rock solid. Perfect. I see. Well, it fits where it should go. Brilliant.